let's take a minute and look at the shape of the cost curves. Uh, the presumption is you have read the material concerning costs and the way we address them in economics, and you have a general understanding of how we calculate them. Let's look at the way we portray them with our graphs. And in particular, we're going to look at three cost curves. The average total cost curve, the average variable cost curve, and the marginal cost curve. What we want to remember is we're going to see these frequently in graphs. And we're going to talk about profit maximizing behavior, uh, which this is half of the issue. You know, how do I maximize my profit, the difference between revenues and costs? What we want to recall here is that when we do look at these curves, usually they have the following orientation to one another. The average total cost curve is U-shaped. Over this range of output, let's say between zero units and a thousand units, say per day when the factory is running, that in the original or so the smaller levels of output, as we increase output, our average total cost decreases. Now, what is average total cost? Average total cost is simply total cost per unit or divided by quantity. It's the average cost for each unit. We have a declining range of average total costs in the early levels of output. As the total cost declines, it reaches a minimum. I've marked that here. And if we expand production beyond that level, then our cost per unit begins to increase. We're going to come back to this. I think this is one of the more important issues about costs. But let's, let's pick a number here arbitrarily. Let's say that at 550 units of output per day, that we achieve our lowest possible cost per unit of manufacturing. This is what is referred to as the productive efficiency point or the point at which we are producing at the most efficient or lowest cost per unit. So remember this low point on the average total cost curve. And remember too, you'll see that the marginal cost curve goes through that point. The other curve up here is the average variable cost curve. We'll discuss that particularly under perfect competition. Uh, if you're familiar still with the, the definitions of this, the, av the variable, average variable cost is simply the total variable cost per unit divided by the output. And again, it follows a similar shape, a U-shape. It reaches a minimum down here, and then as it increases, as it moves out over more output, it gets closer and closer and closer to the average total cost curve. Now, the, di the reason for that is that the distance between these two curves, let's say for this unit of output, we're at 900 units of output, the distance between these two curves is our average fixed cost, which is what? Average fixed cost is total fixed cost per unit. Think about that for a minute. If you take your fixed cost, a given number, $10,000, and you divide it by an ever-increasing level of output, $10,000 divided by 1,000 units, $10,000 divided by 5,000 units. Keep doing that, you see that the cost, the average fixed cost, gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you produce more units. And indeed, the distance between these two curves gets closer and closer together. It gets smaller to re re represent the fact that the average fixed cost is continually declining. Finally, note the marginal cost curve. It's going to start out with a little hook to it, and it's going to work with a positive slope. It's going to go through the lowest point on the average variable cost curve, and then it's going to continue on through the lowest point on the average total cost curve, and it's going to continue to climb. As we do more and more graphs from now on throughout this course, I think you'll get used to drawing, particularly average total cost and marginal cost, because we're going to refer to those in a lot of our discussions.